Let's take a look at solving percentage problems when the original quantity is unknown. Let's start with some general strategies. When the original amount is unknown, we can label it with variables like x or t or p, whatever variable you would like to use. And then we set up the equations. Remember, percentage of means multiplication problems. All right, so let's take a look. The gender wage gap varies by occupation. Female waitresses, on average, earn 82% as much as male waiters. So if a typical female waitress earns $12 an hour in New York City, what does a typical male waiter earn in New York City? In other words, what wage is $12 per hour 82% off? All right, since we do not know how much money a male waiter in New York makes per hour, let's call it X. What we do know is that $12 per hour represents 82% of x. Do you remember how we talked about what off means? 82% of x means what? 82 over 100. The off means multiplication of x. And the is means equals. So that tells you how you can translate words into equations. So you have 12 is equal to point eight to x. That's the multiplication giving you percent. And now we've seen how to isolate the variable x. You'd have to divide both sides by 0.82. And so that would be your answer. You also know how to do this long division. So you can go ahead and do that. So that would be about $14.63. So male waiters earn $14.63 per hour versus female waitresses earn 82% of that, which is $12 an hour. It's always important to end your answer in words. So the male waiter makes $14.63 per hour. All right, let's try this one on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do. Car dealer, mark the price of a new car down by 8%. And the sale price was 18000 What's the original price? Since we do not know the original price, we're going to call it x. Sometimes drawing a picture, a visual aid helps because then you understand what the problem is all about. So let's say x be the original price of the car. So x is this original price. Now the car dealer marked the price of the new car 8% down and the sale price was 18,000. So this is my sale price, which represents 8% less, 8% less than the original amount. So how can we write that in equation form then? 18,000, the sale price is the original price X, and you're taking this red portion away. So 8% of X taken away, taken away means subtraction. Percentage off means multiplication. So now you have an equation and you can solve. So simplify like terms and then divide both sides by 0.92. You know how to do this division, so I'll let you finish that and verify that it really is approximately $19,565. All right, so here's some information. Sometimes information is given to you in form of a pie chart and you have to understand what these different percentages mean. The pie chart here is representing the ethnic composition of University of Wisconsin College's students. There are 1,118 students that are non-white students and they're asking you what's the total enrollment of the colleges. So look at all the breakdown. African Americans, Hispanics, Southeast Asians, American Indians, and white. So 92% of the students are white, and the rest of the demographics are broken down in these percentages. How do we figure out what the total number of students are? We know that this is 5 plus 3, 8. So 8% of the students are 1,118. So from that, we can figure out what the total number of students are. So we'll say x is the total number of students since we do not know that number. And then 8% of that x is 1,118. So divide both sides by 0 0.08. 
and there's your approximate number of students. So there is approximately 13,975 students in the University of Wisconsin colleges. Sometimes you will see equations appear in solving proportions. So let's take a look. A proportion is an equality statement between two ratios. So when you take two ratios and equate them, it forms a proportion. Proportions show up many different places. For example, when you want to find unknown lengths and similar geometric shapes, why is that? Because two objects in geometry are called similar if their corresponding sides are good, proportional. So, for example, if you have a triangle and you have a same triangle blown up twice as much, then all the lengths in the bigger triangle are twice as big as the little triangle and so on. You also use proportions when you're converting, for example, from feet to inches or from feet to centimeter or centimeter to kilometer. You also use it to compute rates, like somebody getting paid so many dollars per hour or the price of gas going up so many dollars per gallon. You also use it in uh, cooking when you are trying to make a batch of cookies which is a larger batch or a smaller batch than the recipe that was originally given to you. So we're going to work through a few examples so you can see how this works. So let's take an example. Paul ran a marathon which is 26.2 miles in 3 hours and 7 minutes. At this rate how long will it take Paul to run a 10K race, which is 6.2 miles? So remember, when they say at this rate, that means at the same speed. If Paul were to run consistent speed as he did for the marathon for this 10K race, then they're asking you how long will it take. Okay, so remember when you are saying the rate, that means distance over time ratio. So we're basically comparing two ratios. So Paul ran 26.2 miles in 187 minutes. Why 187 minutes? Three hours is basically what? Three times 60 minutes, right? Three times 60 minutes is 180 minutes, plus seven is 187 minutes. So 26.2 miles in 187 minutes, 6.2 miles, we don't know how long, so we'll have to call T as our variable. T represents how long it will take him to run 10K race. When you're setting up proportions, it's very important to pay attention to units. If you put miles on numerator and minutes on the denominator on one side, you have to do the same with the other units. This will allow you to set up correct proportions. Now, we want to solve for this T. So first, you can make common denominator. So you have fractions now that have the same denominators which means that the numerators would have to equal, which is basically the same as saying cross multiply. Some of you might be uh, used to hearing the words cross multiply. The cross multiply works. This is the reason behind it. You're making actually a common denominator. And then solve. Since you're trying to isolate the t, you have to divide both sides by 26.2 and then get uh, the answer. You can do the division on your own and you'll see that that's the same as 44.3 minutes. All right, take a look. A cookie recipe costs for one and a half cups of flour, seven ounces of almond paste, and makes two dozen cookies. How much flour would be needed to make a huge batch of these cookies that utilizes 90 ounce can of almond paste? Also, how many cookies would this make? So let's see how we can figure this out. There are two ratios here. So we're going to set them up both. So take a look. Let x be the number of cups of flour and let y represent number of cookies. So flour to almond paste ratio was what? One and a half cups of flour to seven ounces of almond paste. Now we want to use 90 ounces of almond paste and we want to know how many cups of flour. So again, you can cross multiply if you want, or since you only want to solve for x, we just want to get rid of 90. So it's divide by 90. To get rid of it, you would have to undo division, which is multiply both sides by 90. And then you'll get 19.3 cups of flour. 
All right, cookies and almond paste. You can make 24 cookies with a seven ounce paste. So if you wanna know how many cookies you're gonna make out of 90 ounce can, again, multiply both sides by 90 and you'll get about 309 cookies. There are types of proportions that are useful in some applications. One of them is called direct variation. We say the variable A varies directly with B or is directly proportional to B if A is some multiple, some constant multiple of B. And that constant K is called the constant of proportionality. What does that mean? It simply means that A and B, the ratio of A and B is a constant. And for example, if the number of hours you study goes up, the grade will go up. If the number of hours studying goes down, then the grades will go down. So hours of studying and grades are directly proportional. Let's take an example so you can see how it can be applied. A volume V of a balloon varies directly with the cube of the radius. Imagine putting air in a balloon, right? The radius goes up, the volume of the balloon will go up. So those two are directly related to each other. But it's not just V and R. V is related to R, but cube of R. Anytime you're solving proportion problems, making a table of all the given information is useful. Because a lot of times when people think of word problems, they say, uh-oh, can't do it. But it's just different way to write your problem Instead of giving you equations to solve, we're writing them in words. So I would highly suggest that pause the video here, make a table of everything that is given to you, and then see what you can come up with. And then we'll discuss it together. Go ahead, try it on your own. All right, assuming you have paused and at least attempted it, let's show you how you could organize your information for the solution. So we have a bunch of variables floating around, and it looks like there are two sentences, case one and case two. In case one and case two, let's write down all the information that is given to us. So we can say volume of the balloon is V, in the first case, the volume is 900, and in the second case, they're saying find. Find means you don't know, so question mark. The radius of the balloon, let's call it R. And let's see, we have six is the radius for when volume is 900, and 24 is the diameter, which means the radius of the balloon for the second case will be 24 over two or 12 inches. Constant of proportionality, let's call that k. You can use some other variable. In the first case, we don't know. And in the second case, we need to find the volume. So that's why the question mark in the volume. The reason there are two cases is because the first case allows you to find the value of k. You're going to use that value of k in the second case so you can solve for the volume. So we need one more row for the relationship between them. So the direct relationship means that volume equals some constant multiple of R cubed. So K is our constant. So since 900 is our volume in case one equals K times six cubed because six is the radius. So we need to solve that equation. 900 equals K times six cubed. Once you get that K, we'll continue. So go ahead, pause the video find the value of k. Yes, you're allowed to use calculators here. Go ahead and do that. All right, so in case one, you should have seen 900 equals k times six cubed. And so we divide by the six cubed to get our k. And I used my calculator and got that as my k. So let's put that value for k. So now that we have our k, our case two relationship is going to be what? We have our volume is k times r cubed. So k times r cubed, so that 
when I use my calculator, I will end up with 7,200 cubic inches. So that is the final answer. The red is my final answer. So the volume of the balloon, when the diameter of the balloon is 24 inches, is 7,200 cubic inches. So this is very typical of these problems. Make your chart. There's always case one, case two. In case one, you're given enough information to find the missing variable. Then using that value, in case two, you'll be able to find the other missing variable. That's pretty much the setup for all of the problems. All right, inverse variation is the next one. Can you imagine what that is? Remember, direct means one goes up, the other one goes up. Inverse variation would must mean the opposite. So one goes up, the other one goes down. So instead of their ratio being constant, you will have their product being constant. So inverse variation, A varies inversely as B if A is a constant multiple of 1 over B. Remember, direct variation, it was just k times b. But inverse variation will be k times 1 over b. And again, k is called the constant of proportionality. So all that means, for example, if we take gas price. If gas prices go up, then on average, the number of miles that people drive goes down. One goes up, the other one goes down. So gas price and miles driven would have an inverse variation. Let's take an example to demonstrate that. Suppose you have that m is the number of miles Joe drives each week and is inversely proportional to the price of gas. So when the price is $3 a gallon, Joe drives 240 miles each week. Determine the relationship between m and g and also predict how many miles Joe will drive if the price of gas is $5 a gallon. So I would highly recommend pausing the video here making the chart, getting the variables, and setting up the equations. See what you can do. Go ahead, try it on your own, just like we did with the direct variation. Remember, word problems are nothing but equations written in words. That's all it is. So change your mental outlook on what you see word problems as. All right, let's set up our chart. So we have variables. We have, again, two cases. M is the number of miles. In first case, it's 240. And in the second case, you are asked to find the M. We have price of gas G. In the first case, is $3 per gallon. In the second case, $5 per gallon. And then we have the constant of proportionality, which we will find using case 1. Use that same value in case 2. And then we'll have a relationship that will allow us to solve to get the value in the second case of m. So we have m equals k over g. So in case 1, we have 240 equals some constant divided by 3. So pause the video here and solve the equation for k. So case 1, you're going to solve 240 equals k over 3. Go ahead, pause the video. You can use a calculator if you need one. But here, you don't need one, do you? All right. We're going to have 240 equals k over 3. So multiply both sides by 3, and we'll give you k equals 720. So we have our k is 720. Using this value of k, we can now find our m. So we have m would equal 720 divided by 5. So our case 2 answer, m would be 720 over 5, or 144 miles. So our final answer is Joe will drive 144 miles that week if the price of gallon was $5 per gallon. Sometimes there is a joint variation, which means that you're looking at a combination of direct and inverse variation. An example of that, we won't do a concrete example, but in chemistry, for example, they know from experiments that pressure of gas is inversely proportional to the volume V of the gas. 
And at the same time, it's directly proportional to the temperature T. So if you were to do a problem where you are given information and you have to find other information about that particular gas, you would set it up just like the previous two problems. So take a look. We're not going to do an actual problem. I want you to do one on homework on your own. But let's just look at the setup. We'll do the same thing. Uh, the letter V will represent volume of gas. T will represent temperature. K will be constant of proportionality. And our pressure will then be K times T, because pressure and temperature are directly related, but then divided by V, because P and V are inversely related. You can see how, in other words, if you rewrite the equation, it will be P times V equals K times T. In other words, the product of pressure and volume is constant times temperature. That's another way you can think of this equation. And so if you were to solve it, you would have two cases. You'll be given all the information except for one of the missing variables. And then you would solve the equations to get your answers. So go ahead and try some homework problems on your own then.